I hope you all had a blessed 4th of July and want to welcome you back here, uh, Pastor J.R. Wells. I want to thank Pastor Mike once again for just opening it up for us. I mean, my goodness, the man's got a heart for you. And if, you, if, if you're anywhere close to Gettysburg and you want to come out and, and listen to some good preaching, I tell you what, here's the place. And also, uh, Pastor Mike's on Sunday mornings and Sunday evenings is some powerful stuff. He just got through teaching about uh, the love of God, and uh, I wasn't be able to be here because we were on vacation, but we're here now. So God is, God is so good, and he uses people to make things work for him. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about seek God, not seeking, but seek God. There's, there's a purpose for us to come to God and to find Him and, and to see Him and to seek after Him. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer and just uh, open up here. <coughs> Father, <coughs> excuse me. Father, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to bring forth your word, Lord God. Lord, bring forth your word. Lord, your word is power. Your word is healing. Your word, Lord God, is deliverance. Why? Because Jesus is the word. <coughs> and the word will set you free. Now, Father God, I just thank you and praise you that those that are here listening, that they have a heart to receive, ears to hear, and a bonus to do. Rhonda, I need water. <coughs> and a bonus to do. And I need it. And, and by having that boldness, Lord, we thank you. Now, I want to read a declaration, and I'd like for you to just come with me. Excuse me, I've I got to chill here. Hmm. Cap, thank you for the little mishap. I got a little throat problem that just started coughing. And so, but I want to read a declaration and a degree, a decree. If you would say it with me, I'm sure you'd be blessed. I say it every time I preach. Usually my mornings is, my time actually, is 10 o'clock on Tuesday mornings. And I tell you, I, I, once you get used to it, you get in a routine and, and you stay on that routine, you find out how good it is. And then Pastor Mike says, well, we're not doing the 4th of July, but will you do 2 o'clock on Thursday? And I said, I sure will because it's, it, it changes things up for me. It might not change things up for you, but maybe you, you never heard me before. Well, if you didn't, I, I pray that you get blessed, and I pray that you'll come back on Tuesday mornings and listen. But as, as we go through the Word of God, I, I enjoy speaking the Word of God. I, I don't like to talk much about myself, because it's just me. But when I talk about the Word, we're talking about Jesus. If you're with me today, just say Jesus. Jesus. Oh, there's something about the name of Jesus. It opens up the heavens. It opens up doors that men think they can shut on you. It opens up things to you. It takes the fear away from you. Because Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The Word of God says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was Jesus. Hallelujah. Just repeat after me, please. Okay? Uh, and that's everybody, if you don't mind. Here it is. It says, the Lord is with me today. Come on now, I can't hear you. I need help. The Lord is with me today. I am blessed coming in. And I'm blessed going out. Hallelujah. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater <laughs> is he that's in me than he that's in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me shall be condemned by my word with the word of God. 
The blood of Jesus covers me. Hallelujah. By his stripes, I am healed. I find favor and good understanding with God and with man. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Do you notice? Now, that, that's, that I'm going to talk. Did you notice that it says, My God shall supply all of my needs? He's speaking to each and every one of us. See, uh, you know, here at Jesus' Lord Ministries, two things, well, one thing that I've guaranteed that I haven't heard since I've been coming. We, we came and then we backed off. Well, it didn't back off. The Lord had other things for us to do. And now we're back. And every time we come, one thing we don't hear is about money. Pastor Mike's not a beggar. Because he knows this scripture here says that God will supply. And I want you to understand that too. God will supply your needs. Now, you say, well, I asked God for something and I didn't get it. Well, let me ask you something. Was it a want or was it a need? There's a difference. Because if you want something, it means basically... It's for personal use. But if it's a need that you have, it means that, you are, that God's going to supply that need. Not that he won't supply your wants because he wants to give you the desires of your heart. But when you have a need, usually that need that you have is something for you to be blessed by. Come on now, don't sit there like a, a, log on a, a, a toad on a log today. Talk to me. He, he, sets, he, he says that I will supply. It has nothing to do with my sermon. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but somebody needs to hear this. If you have a need today, I promise you that God will provide for that need. All you have to do is say, God, in the name of Jesus, help me meet this need. Meet this need that I have. Not a greed, but a need. And then what you're going to find out when that comes to pass, somebody's going to help you. You know, sometimes we get a need that, that we want to need, and somebody will come up and say, here, God told me to help you. And you look at them, oh, no, I can't take that from you. But you just ask God to help you, and that person's helping you. What do you think is just going to fall from heaven? God uses people. Now, you might be the one. You might be the one that God uses to meet a need. And when that happens, you're going to find out that your heart is so full of joy that you are able to help someone that it, you just get all excited. Man, I remember, I still, to this day, I, I look for a need in somebody. I ask God, God, show me somebody that I can help today. Not that I've got a whole bunch, but i got what I need. Because of God. And then when I help them, there's a joy that comes unspeakable. That joy that comes is unspeakable and full of glory. Because it's God that's meeting our need. And when we see that and we know that, we, we realize that when God says, I will meet your need, it's a promise. Now, I don't know, like I said, I don't know how I got off on that or why I got off on that. But here, I, I just want to start off once again with my favorite scripture. And I know some of you that's been listening to me for a while say, not again. Yeah, Deuteronomy 10. Uh, it's just something about Deuteronomy 10 that I like. Verse 12. It's just something about it. Because what it does <clears throat> is, is it challenges us. It brings us to a place where we will either answer yes, no, or maybe. And hopefully the answer is yes, that you answer. Because if you answer no, you're missing a lot. If you answer maybe, you're, that means you're standing on the fence. And what did God say about those that are lukewarm? 
He will spew you out of, your, out of his mouth. So here we go. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, here we go. When is now? See, this is why I like this. Because it challenges us. This scripture challenges us. I want to talk to you about seek God. But first it says, and now. Right now, not tomorrow, not what you, how much you messed up yesterday, not what you got planned in the future, but right now is what God's talking about. It, just think about that. Just, just look, at your, look at your neighbor and say, right now. And I got a question for you. When is now? Pastor Rod Parsley said it this way. Now is now, and there ain't no more, more to it. It's now. When is now? Right now. Right now. It says, right now. And now, what does the Lord, what does the Lord, your God, require of you? Oh, my goodness. First of all, he's asking a question. What does the Lord, your God? See, if you're going to seek God and go after God, you need to first know who God is in your life. It says, and now, what does the Lord your God? Is he your God? Or is, or is he just another, another word for another God? I know over in India, and I heard, heard this, I've never been there, but I've heard many stories about it, that they have so many gods that when, they talk, when you talk about Jesus, it's just another check mark on their, on their wall. It's just another God. But no, when we talk about Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one that opens up the heavens and says, I'm coming back. When we talk about Jesus, the water walker, hallelujah. When we talk about Jesus, the one that raised up from the grave, hallelujah. When we talk about Jesus, we're talking about the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We're not talking about just another check mark on your wall for, to, to say, I, I'm, I got another God. No, Jesus is not just another God. Jesus is Lord of lords. Jesus is the Lord of all lords. He said that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. My friend, let me tell you something. If you ain't got that, if you ain't got Jesus in your heart, or if you think I'm, I'm fooling around, or if you think these preachers and pastors that's talking about Jesus, if you think they're, they're, it's just another, another God that we're checking off to see if we have a God, let me tell you, you're wrong, because one day, and, and I believe it's going to happen soon, one day, I've been speaking about it, I've been hearing about it for the last 45 years, maybe the last 60-some years of my life, that Jesus is coming back. Let me tell you something. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Are you ready? So you got to have salvation. you got to have Jesus in your heart. you got to say, God, forgive me. And when you say, God, forgive me, you got to put away all those other gods. you got to put away all those other things. Now, I'm not telling you to put away things because if there's something that you personally need to, be, to put away, God will show that to you personally. Don't let a man bring condemnation upon you and say, you got to get this, you got to do that, you got to do this. No, Jesus says, all you got to do is call upon me, and I will answer. Jesus says, if you call upon me and let me come into your heart, I will answer you and I will come in. And then everything that we're going through, everything that we're doing, like smoking, drinking, gambling, whatever it is, whoring around, whatever it is, God will take care of that for you, with you. Don't let a man tell you you got to stop that before you can accept Jesus. No, Jesus, Jesus will tell you what you need to stop and when you need to stop it. See, we, we, live, we live in a world that if we go to church, you got to do this, you got to do that. I was just talking to, to Stephen back there. He was talking about how, you know, we, we add things and, and everything into our lives and stuff. And it's all, when we add things to God, it's sinful. It's sinful because God gives us what we need right here in His Word. He says, 
And now what does the Lord your God... See, if He's your God, if He... Are you listening to me, church? If He's your God, you're going to have a desire to give up all those things. You're going to have a desire to give up things that you know that's not right. Now, you might not give them up this very minute. Then again, you might. My wife, when, when her and I, when we became Christians, when we became born again, she was a smoker. It took her about 30 seconds to quit smoking. Now, think about that. She had a desire. She knew smoking wasn't right for her. Okay? Me, it took me almost six months to a year to quit smoking. And i got to be honest with you, when I get around people smoking and I smell the smoke, I still have a, a, a taste for it, but I don't do it because I know it's not good for my body. But God, God dealt with me in time of His timing. You don't have to worry about what man says you've got to stop doing. You've got to worry about what God says you've got to stop doing. You know what's wrong and what's right. God will show you what's wrong and what's right. He will show you what salvation is. Salvation is something we need from God. Salvation is God's peace, God's love, God's forgiveness. And that's what we need, church. We need, we, we need God's salvation in our heart to forgive us, each and every one of us, each and every day. In Psalms 51, David says, Create in me, O God, a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, but restore unto me the joy of your salvation. And then, and then, see, we always want to stop there. And, you know, can't me the joy of your salvation and we want to stop there to joy but it goes on to say and then I will teach sinners your ways the way of God see we 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 got it so much in our heads that 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 if I don't if I, I'm programmed that if I don't stop doing this then I can't have God no you can have God just where you're at why because God loves you enough to send his son into this world to die for you and you think that you you think that you got to be perfect do you can't be perfect my friend you can't be perfect sister you can't be perfect daughter you can't be you have to have jesus in your heart and that salvation that runs in your blood from jesus christ in order for you to have a stairway to heaven, have a way to heaven. You know, Jesus is coming back. I said that a couple minutes ago, and I got, Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, excuse my expression, but all hell's going to break loose on this earth because we're going to be gone. We're going to be gone. I don't care whether you're pre-trib, after-trib, that tribulation coming or not coming. That's immaterial. I don't care. I just know I'm going. Are you with me? I just know that I'm going with Jesus. And that's what you got to get in your heart. I know what you're going. Don't argue the Bible with somebody. Don't argue because if you know that you know that you know, that's all that matters. Because when you know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and He is your Savior, when you know that there's no other way to heaven but through Jesus, when you know I can't get there unless I ask Jesus to come into my heart, we're going to be taken away. Are you with me? We're going to be taken away with Him. And we're going to be in heaven. Hallelujah. And I personally believe that those that went before me in heaven, that's in heaven, I'm going to see them. I'm going to see them. I'm going to see my daughter. I'm going to see my son. I'm going to see all my friends that went before me. My mom and dad, I, I hope to see my mom. I hope to see my dad, but I'm not sure. I, I, I believe 
that they made a commitment before they passed away, but I'm not sure. So, but I'm hoping to see them in heaven because I want to see them. I want to rejoice with them. And when we get to heaven, what a glorious day that will be. There's some, some country songs that say, when we all get to heaven, what a joy, a joy that will be. Yeehaw! That will be, I got to quit singing. I'm getting a nod. But anyway, yeah, you know, I can't sing, but I'm not here to sing. I'm here to tell you about Jesus. Is it okay? Is it okay if I tell you about Jesus? Just, just let me tell you about Jesus. Because, see, without Jesus, we're nothing. I said without Jesus, we're nothing. We're, we, we, we can have everything. We can have everything. I was speaking to Steve again about the, some of this technology that's going on. You know, I'm not smart enough to know all this technology, but what, like I told Stephen, there's one thing I know. God's got it under control. I might be stupid in this area, but I'm smart enough to know that God's got it in control. Are you with me? Are you with me? God's, and that's what he's got in control of your life. See, he says, and now, oh, I love this scripture. I, I, I'm just going to read it again, okay? And now, what does the Lord your God require of you? See, first of all, he's got to be your God. And then once he's your God, he requires something of you. And you know what that is? To love him. To cherish him. That's all. Just to love him. You don't have to... to, to, to Give up your bank account. I know I, I hear people, well, I got all this money. If I go to Jesus, people's going to be wanting it. Just don't tell them you got the money. Jesus knows what you got. Or you got people that says, I don't have nothing. Well, how am I going to Jesus with nothing? That's what he wants. You got nothing, but he'll fill you with everything. He will hold no good thing back from you. No good thing will he hold back from you. That's our God. And now what does the Lord your God require of you? First of all, he's got to be your God. Right. And I can't get enough of that. He's got to be your God. If he's not your God, I said if he's not your God, then this scripture's not talking to you. But if he's your God, it's talking to you. And it goes on to say, oh, I've got to put these on. Got me right in the eyeball. It goes on to say, and now what does the Lord your God require of you? but to fear him. Now, to fear him is not go in a corner shaking and, and, and I'm afraid to come out. That's not what God's talking about. The fear of God is the love of God. To fear God is to love him with everything you got. The fear is how much can I love you, Lord God? How much, now, this is me talking, okay? Somebody else may have a different opinion about fear. Of the fear of the Lord. But this is my opinion about, this is what I've learned. The fear of the Lord is to me that I can go to him fearfully, but I can go to him saying, God, here I am. See, the word of God says that we are the hope of glory. In us is the hope of glory. And we can come boldly. I had to get that scripture back. I knew what I wanted but it just had to come to me. We can come boldly to the throne room of God. Think about that. Think about that. We, you, me, my wife, my sons, my daughter, my sister, my brothers, all of you, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. We can come and find help in times of need. See, that's where we mostly fell at. We don't want to go to God. We don't want to go to the throne of grace to find, find help. What we want to do is we want to go to the pastor. He can help us. We want to go to the deacons. They can help us. We want to go any part but God. See, when you fear God, you know where you want to go. You want to go to the throne room of God. You want to go to the very grace of God, where God's grace will come upon you and show you mercy and help you in times of need. He will be there for you. 
God, when you fear God, it's not a fear that, that you're shaking, that I can't get by, or some kind of spooky thing. God's not a spooky thing. God's a great thing. He's not a thing. He is God. And I just made, said the word thing just to bring out something. Do you understand what I'm saying? God is great and greatly to be praised. The Lord your God require of you, but to fear Him. But to fear Him. How do I fear God? I fear Him with the love that He's placed inside of me. Now this is me. You might have another th thing of fear. But it, it, but it doesn't matter. To fear God is to love Him with all your heart. With all your soul. With all your spirit. With all your mind. With all your body. With everything. With everything. I come to you, Lord. I come to your throne of grace right now. I'm here, God. I'm here, God. It's, hey, God, it's JR again. Remember me? I was just here two minutes ago. I know you didn't forget me. I just want to let you know I'm back because I'm, I'm in need again. But you just left two minutes ago. Yes, God, I know, but I'm back. Why? Because I need you. I can't live without you. I can't go without being able to come to your throne of grace. I can't provide for myself. I need your help to provide. I can't get the things done that you want me to get done. I can't preach without you helping me to preach. I can't speak without you helping me to speak. I can't be educated unless you help me to be educated. I need you, Lord God. I need food on my table, Lord. Where do I get it from? Well, you go to the grocery store. Yeah, I know. But, Lord, sometimes I might not have enough money to go to the grocery store. Well, I'm going to supply for you, God says. Let me tell you a little story real quick about me. Like I said, I don't like talking much about myself because I like talking about God. Is that okay? I like talking about Jesus. But there's some things, it's the testimony that I have. You know how you overcome the enemy? In Revelations it says we overcome him by the word of our mouth. But it goes first it says we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Our testimony. The blood of the Lamb. I'm covered with the blood of the Lamb. I'm covered. I'm not afraid to walk down the street and, and look at the enemy and say, get out of my way. When the, when the enemy sees me coming, they have to move because I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. But what makes it even better is I got a word of testimony to preach. Testimony is something that God's done for you. Here's what God done for us back in 1980-something. I fell 65 feet. Yes, 65 feet. I hit the ground. I was hurting. Went to the hospital, got all of this stuff taken care of, but I couldn't go back to work for a while. Well, when you don't work, you don't have money. So what happened was there was one day... My wife and I, I'm not even going to tell you about the car deal. <laughs> we went to, we had an old, uh, what was that, honey? An old duster, Plymouth duster. And the front axle broke on it. Not the axle, but the A-frame. And we're going down the road like this, driving down the road. We had a mattress on top that sunk in the middle. We're taking the mattress back to the place that we bought the new mattress so, so we can trade it in. But anyway, we're going down the road, crooked. You know what? People says you can't drive a car like that. I'm sorry to say I did. Why? Because God made it possible to drive it until we were able to fix it. But that has nothing to do with what I'm going to say. That's just part of it, okay? When you go through something, it seems like, you know, you ever heard the, old, the expression, when all hell breaks loose, it breaks loose big. Well, sometimes that happens to us. And if you're a Christian, it's going to happen to you. Why? Not because of you being a Christian, but because of your love for God. Because of your love for God. He said, let us come boldly to the throne room of grace and find help in time of need. We got up one morning, we needed a loaf of bread. Didn't have enough. We needed, I think it was a nickel or 25 cent, I'm not sure. 
We needed that money. We needed 25 cents or a nickel. I think it was a nickel. We needed a nickel to buy a loaf of bread. We didn't have it. We had almost enough, but we didn't have enough. And I'm saying, God, what are we going to do? We, we, we need a loaf of bread. You know, I didn't get this belly on me by not eating bread. I got this from eating bread. I you know, well, anyway, that's mine. That's paid for. We went and prayed, God, we need help. Now, I was, I don't know, I wasn't a young Christian, but I wasn't quite mature yet. Okay? And then when you fall 61 feet and you're laying on the ground by his stripes, I'm healed, and everybody's running around, he's dead, he's, he's cussing God. And I was praying in the Holy Spirit, I was praying in tongues, and there, some guy said, no, he's praying in, in their tongues. That's all I could pray, because I didn't know what else to pray. I didn't know my status, but God knew it. God see me through. So anyway, back to the loaf of bread. We, we, I was told not to go down rabbit trails, and that's a rabbit trail. I'm sorry. But listen, we're sitting there and we prayed that we need a nickel for a loaf of bread. So we go to the mailbox. Where we lived at, the mail came a little early, about 11 o'clock or so in the morning. That was early compared to some places that we lived. We, so we go to the mailbox. I open the mailbox up. And there's an envelope in there. No, no return address or nothing, just an envelope with the stamp. And it said, and I opened it up, and there's a dollar and a quarter. Now, you might say, well, what's a dollar and a quarter going to do? Oh, the devil said the same thing. <laughs> he said the same thing, but let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When I looked in there and I seen that, and the devil said, what are you going to do with a dollar and a quarter? I said, I'm going to give God back a quarter. What? Yeah. Yeah, I gave God back the quarter. Why? Because I knew where it came from. It came from God. I don't know. It took a man to get it to me, or maybe a woman, or maybe a child. I don't know, but I know I got it. And I know that I had to bless God with what I got. And I returned it. We returned the quarter back to God. We gave it back. And we went out and bought a loaf of bread. And because of that quarter we gave back, we need to get... Oh, man, I, I, I got to continue. I can't stop. We needed gas in the car. Five dollars is all we needed back in them days. It got you a lot of gas. Enough to get to where you're going and back. Five dollars. That's all I needed. Five dollars worth of gas. I go in, I pump the gas, go, going to pay for it. Some guy walks out, some gentleman walks out and says, Here, the Lord said, the Lord said, I said, You're not listening to me, church. The Lord said for me to give you this. He gave me a five dollar bill to pay for the gas. That means I have my five dollars left over to do something else with. You see how God works? When we're not afraid to come to his throne room, when we're not afraid to come to him, when we, yeah, I was scared. But I was scared of not God, but of myself not being able to do the right thing. But I went to God and I said, we need it, God. We have a need. We didn't have a want. We had a need. There's a difference. I told you that earlier. There's a difference between a need and a want. A need you can do without, but a want, no, I'm sorry, the want you can do without, but the need you've got to have. Are you with me? You've got to have the need, the want you can almost wait for. So we got it, went and got the loaf of bread, all happy and stuff, and blessing God with it and everything else. And then all of a sudden, because we gave back to God, like I said, Pastor Mike don't talk much about giving money and stuff here, but, but I'm, not, I'm not begging for money. I'm just telling you how you can receive from God by giving. I got a message I'm going to talk to Pastor Mike about, about giving the blessing to open the doors. See, I don't want to talk about it unless Pastor Mike says it's okay because it's talking about dollars. It's talking about dollars. It's talking about how you can be blessed. And how I can be blessed. Do you know what? We, we, we did that and God blessed us back. And there was groceries on the, 
on the front steps one time. We came back, came back again. There was more groceries there. Some of the stuff we didn't like, but it was okay. God blessed us. God blessed us. So through that, through all that, you know what my wife and I did? When we got on, back on our feet, we opened up a food pantry because we knew that the need that people had needed to be met, and God used us to help people meet their needs. I can tell you, you will not believe it, but throughout the years that her and I ran the food pantry that we operated, we probably blessed over a million people with supplemental groceries by going through different food banks, by, by helping different people, by going to different places. If we, we, weren't, we weren't just states in one place. My goal was to reach out, to go out and meet it. And, it, and I met my goal. And then God said, it's time. I said, okay, Lord. We met the goal. I, I, my, my vision was, when I first started, was this, was to have a, a, a dock where big trucks can back in. We can unload them, and we can load them back up. Guess what? <laughs> God did it. God did it. God did it. God did it. Why? Because we learn how to give. We learn how to give. And I want to tell you another story right now. This, this is just a recent story. In Proverbs, it says that when you, land to the, when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. I was reading that one day, and my daughter just lost her job. I'm sure she don't mind me saying this. But she just lost her job, and it was no fault of hers. I know you're going to say, well, that's what everybody says. Well, yeah, this is what everybody says. But it was no fault of hers. So she had severance pay coming because of her job, because of what she'd done. She had it coming. It belonged to her. Well, they were going to withhold it from her because they fired her. They said, we, you know, you're not getting it because we fired you. Well, she went through the channels. She went through uh, the HR, and she went to a higher part of the HR and talked to somebody. And I prayed one day. I was looking at that scripture in Proverbs. And it says, when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. And I'm thinking, now wait a minute, Lord. Now wait a minute. You said, when I give to you, give to the poor. Now we've helped poor people for 30-some years. Probably more. But we help them. What I consider poor, you might not consider them poor. We help those that are in need. And that's what God calls the poor. We help them. And I said, Lord, I want to know something. My daughter has a need to get her severance pay. And we've, been, we've given to you and given to the poor. Can I take this, what you owe, what you said you owe? Now, I'm not getting to taking the Bible out of contents, but God says when you give to the poor, it's like lending to him. And when you lend something to somebody, do you expect it back? Come on, let me see you raise a hand. Do you expect back when you give something to somebody? I mean, there's times I lend tools out to people, got them back, they were busted up and everything else. But it's not like that with God. When you lend to God, oh, let me tell you something. When God, oh, I said when you lend to God, you get something good. So I said, Lord, I said, my daughter has been unjustly, I got it, considered, unjustly considered not to get her pay. I said, would you take what you owe me and give to her? Mm, 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 I don't know how I can say this, but, but I'm getting a little excited, and you've got to forgive me. No, no, don't forgive me. Just, just get excited with me. Two days later, Two days. Two days. She got a phone call from her HR. And they, these are the words they said to her. What do you want? She told them, I want my severance pay and my vacation pay. And they said, here's what they said, and please listen. 
They said to her, we will give you your severance pay plus your vacation pay if you promise not to sue us. Do you hear what I just said? They knew she was unjustly fired. They knew. They knew it. But they had to take care of it. But it's because, I believe in my heart, you can't tell me no difference. It's because we gave to the, those that are in need, and I went to the Lord, and I said, Lord, my family has a need now. My daughter needs this need to be met. And you know what? God repaid me by giving to my daughter. And you might say, well, that's really off the wall. I don't care what you say. I just know it worked. I just know what we've done to help people with what we received in return. I just know it. And I know that God answered my prayer for my family. See, He went on to take care of you if you're born again. And now what does the Lord your God require of you? He doesn't only take care of you. Let me tell you something. Let me just finish this real quick. To fear Him, to walk, to walk in all His ways, i got to stop right there. It's time to go. But to walk in all his ways. Maybe Tuesday I'll pick this back up if the Lord's willing. Well, if the Lord's willing, if, if, if he tells me to. He says to fear him and to walk in his ways. You walk in his way by doing what he said to do. He said to pray for the sick. Love those that are unlovable. Reach out to those that stink. Uh-oh. Did I say that? Yeah. Reach out to those that are dirty. I have, a, I have a desire in my heart right now. I'm not going to share it with you. I have a, a, a vision in my heart for something to come to pass. And, when, and I know it's going to come to pass because it keeps eating at me. and keeps eating at me. And I ain't shared it with nobody and I'm not going to. Because some things you've got to keep to yourself until you see it starting to come to pass. But I know it's going to come to pass. And when it comes to pass, oh, glory be to God. Oh, I just, I, I, anyway, we, we got to go here. It's, it's, it's time's up on me. I want to thank you all for listening. Now listen, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, I'm going to say it again, if you do not know Jesus in your heart, not in your head, but in your heart. I want you right now just to say this simple prayer. Father God, I don't know Jesus, but I want to know Him. Will you let Jesus come into my heart? Will you forgive me of my sins and let me walk with Him? Let me talk with Him. Let me not walk in fear, but walk in love. Help me to show me how to come to your throne of grace so I can find help in my time of need. And if you pray that prayer, right now I want you to get on that internet and I want you to tell somebody here at Jesus is Lord Ministry about it. And if you're anywhere within the sound of my voice, I want you to be able to, to, to tell Pastor Mike, I accepted Jesus. Not for me. I, you know... Uh, it, I could care less if you mention my name. I just want you to know that Jesus is the one that saves you. Jesus is the one that heals you. Jesus is the one. And if you need healing in your body, I pray for healing right now in your body. I pray for healing in your body. I got two minutes left. Can I have my two minutes? I got two minutes. If you got he need healing in your body, I pray for that back to be healed right now. I pray for that foot, that leg, right now in the name of Jesus. That headache be gone in the name of Jesus. The eye disease that you're having be gone in the name of Jesus. The hearing that you said you're losing be gone in the name of Jesus. Respect God and you will have completely healed. Come to God and you will be healed in your ears, your eyes. There's somebody that, both of them together, it's, it's you. You know who you are. I claim healing to you right now in the name of Jesus. I claim healing to you in the name of Jesus right now. That kidney problem, healing in the name of Jesus. 
Healing in the name of Jesus. Right now, healing. Healing. I want you to just let Pastor Mike know that Jesus loves you, or Jesus is Lord ministry knows. Let them know that you're listening. We're not asking for money. We just want acknowledgement. Let them know that you, that you hear God speaking to you. In Jesus' name, I want to thank you. I'll be back on Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock right here at Jesus is Lord Ministry. You're welcome to come back and hear again what I got to say. You might hear the same thing over and over again, but it's okay because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Thank you very much. God bless each and every one of you. Please let, let us know. Amen and amen.